Hey everybody, so I just wanted to kind of make a quick video here just explaining, you know, why I'm voting for Pierre Polyev. As I've said uh, multiple times on this channel, I'm not conservative. I'm also clearly not liberal. Uh, if you've been following this, you'll, you'll definitely be aware of that. But generally speaking, you know, people who are not either conservative or liberal, you know, a, a lot of the time we feel like we're politically homeless. And when I say something like that, someone will say, well, why not vote for the PPC? And I'll explain why I'm not voting for the PPC. Which essentially, you know, um, would also explain why I'm voting for Pierre Polyev. So basically, you know, Maxim Bernier has not been able to gain any steam at all in the pollings. He's stuck at 2 to 3% with very rare upticks. He's just kind of stuck in the mud, right? Like he can't get anywhere, right? He's also less uh, lost an, an election in his own riding and in a riding in Manitoba. I believe it was like central north Manitoba which actually has the most concentrated amount of PPC supporters. He lost that election, uh, election to a conservative named Brandon, who used a slogan of Let's Go Brandon to market his campaign. And this is after the whole Joe Biden thing. So I mean, the fact that they would pick that it just shows, that, okay, Maxim Bernier in the most concentrated PPC writing in the country He's facing an idiot named Brandon who uses the slogan, let's go Brandon, surely he'll win, and he lost. Right? And he, this guy, he just can't seem to gain any momentum anywhere. He can't gain the polls, and he can't gain a seat to be an MP. That's a huge problem. He also got arrested over COVID. Now, again, if you know me, I'm very against those kind of mandates. But the best way to do it was not just refuse and get arrested. That makes you look bad. And politics is a popularity contest, whether we like it or not. What he should have done is said, hey, we can't just get arrested by refusing to wear a mask. So what we should do is just make it very difficult, right? Hey, sir, could you put on your mask? I don't have one. Bicker with them a little bit. They finally, you say, okay, fine, but you have to give me one. And then you put it on your ear and they say, no, it has to be on your face. You put it on your other ear. You just make them bother you and just really take time out of what they're doing. And if 20 to 30% of people did that, they wouldn't have enough security guards making sure everyone had their masks. And then potentially you would have seen the mandate lifted because not enough people were following the rules. And then these other people are like, okay, so there's no punishment for these people not following the rules. I'm not following them either. And maybe, again, it's not like 100% that that would work, but it's a possibility that if enough people woke up and just did the right thing during the mandates, maybe we could have got somewhere instead of just saying, no, I'm not wearing one and getting arrested. That just doesn't really help you at all. It's not the right way to do it. Now, right now, the Trudeau liberal totalitarian government needs to go. And that's number one priority. I know Pierre Polyev is not great. I've said, yes, I want him to be prime minister. Yeah, that's because I don't have anyone else to vote for who actually has a chance. Right, so unfortunately, even though Pierre Polyev is not really great at calling on key issues, for example, or being good on key issues, certain wars. YouTube's very specific about mentioning a certain war, but I think you know which one I'm talking about. He supports it. It's a proxy war. I'm very against that. Look at all the things that Robert Kennedy Jr. in the States is calling out. Right? Like, especially with the health crisis. And a lot of these diseases in our health system, I mean, these these diseases aren't just naturally, like, oh, people were just getting more sick. No, these are created. Now, that's a whole other topic for a whole other video. I just want to kind of stick to, you know, why I'm not voting for Maxim Bernier and Pierre Polyev instead. So, basically, it's that, it's that Pierre Polyev has the best chance to overthrow Trudeau. And I, again, I know he's not really that much different, and he's a conservative, and we, we've had conservatives in before, and it's still a nightmare. We're still funding wars. We're still in a bad direction, but at least with Pierre Polyev, it would be a little bit better financially, hopefully. So, as I said, I'm not a conservative. I'm more of a populist, so I do not want to, to vote for P Pierre Polyev, but I do have to. I, I don't have a, a, another option to, if getting Trudeau out is your number one priority, which it is for a lot of Canadians, you have to go with Pierre Polyev. I know that's not a great answer. But in order for me to go over to the PPC, they're going to have to gain some momentum somewhere. 
right? Like they're going to either have to get a new leader in there or Max is going to have to really reestablish him, himself, appeal to the younger voters, especially the upcoming, you know, Generation Alpha, the kids who were born from 2011 to 2025, who in my opinion are going to be extremely either conservative or populist. And I have a feeling they're going to be more populist because like me and like a lot of you, we're going to understand that both conservatives and liberals have had power for a long time and look where we are. Liberals are worse, but conservative, I mean, it's not that great on your side either. Right, so he needs to really, really start campaigning and going after concentrated PPC writings where he has the best chance and campaign his ass off and in 2029, when some of these Generation Alpha male or Alpha Alpha uh, Al, Generation Alpha will be uh, 18 years old, not very many of them will be able to vote because 2011 is when that generation started. But you can at least gain some momentum there in 2029. Hopefully before, but I don't see it happening until then. Maybe some you know Gen Z and some millennials and. Some Gen Xers will you know, turn more populist, maybe. But again, Maxim Bernier has to really get going if he's going to be the leader. Right? And in order to, you know, gain, he's got to start you know, picking up some momentum somewhere, somehow. And again, I think his best chance is with this young generation of kids who were locked down and forced to wear masks. I mean, they were exposed to the biggest left-wing propaganda, probably more than at least my generation and Gen Z. I mean, the, the what happened during COVID was a disaster. And these kids are not going to remember. And I don't think they're going to go as conservative because the conservatives weren't exactly uh, there from the beginning. I know a lot of you say that that's not true. It is true. Pierre Polyev did not campaign on ending the... the uh, he, he didn't... I mean, he, he called out for the, for the mandates to be ended after the protests. Well, I heard him say it before the pro... Okay, well, he, he wasn't really taking this as a big issue until he saw all of his supporters and a lot of people on the right go uh, go and start protesting. And then he said, oh, look at my supporters. I'm going to go and join them now. But he only did it to pander. Let's be honest here. Pierre Polyev is talking like a populist. Is he? No. Populists are anti-war. End of story. So again... Don't want to vote for Pierre Polyev, uh, Pierre Polyev, but Trudeau's got to go, and I have no choice. Let me know what you think, guys. Are you, uh, you know, are you still voting conservative? Have I, you know, have I convinced you that maybe in the next election in 2029 that maybe he's got a, a Maxim Bernier has a chance and he can actually, you know, maybe gain a, a seat or two in Parliament? Do you like the party? Do you like him? Let me know what you think in the comments. I really enjoy reading them. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you later.